Hello Pisces, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for tuning in. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Leila, the Lunamon Reader, and I am one of the few people who focuses almost exclusively on the amazing Lunamon practice. So Pisces, here we are with your monthly reading. We are in May. We've got some really interesting cards for you for the month of May, and this is from your Astro Clock. We have very bright cards. I mean, two of the brightest cards, the Clover and the Sun. These are amazing cards. They are wish fulfillment cards. The Snake is different. The Snake is a pretty tricky card. It is actually the trickiest card of the deck, and it tends to be associated with deception. However, with positive cards, it can bring out a more positive aspect. And it is also a card of silence. So I really think here, Pisces, that you are gonna find an indirect and roundabout way to achieve your goals. I also think the cards are telling you to be silent and to be patient and to sort of wait for the right time for things to unfold. And in this positive way that we're seeing through the cards. As they stand, they're sort of general. They don't really tell us what area this is in. The snake can sometimes be associated with a person, and in this sense, it tends to be a really tricky person. Um, in the context of a relationship, Pisces, I think you're gonna have the upper hand, and you are gonna be able to see through someone's intentions, but it can also suggest that you're the one who is in a position of advantage, again, following this idea of being cautious and patient. So let's put these interesting cards aside and see what your nine card portrait is going to tell us for this month. So for this one, I've got Titania's cards and we are going to draw a nine card portrait. Let's see what is in store for you. Okay, Pisces, here is your nine card portrait. And obviously the relationship element is coming in very clearly and very strongly in the cards through the man and woman and through the ring. And we also have the heart that really adds to this. We also have the lovely clover as your first card. And the clover is in your astro clock cards as well. So that is a really bright message. The cards are very bright for the most part. The scythe is a little bit tricky, but I'm going to build it up with the other lines and I'm inclined not to see it as a separation so much, but let's see how we build it from the ground up. We also have the key that is a very beautiful card, a card of success. So it's looking very positive. We just have this tricky scythe in the sort of middle of all this that sort of throws a wrench maybe a little bit in there, but let's see how, when we build it from the ground up, what it looks like. So in the first diagonal, we have the clover woman and scythe. And the woman is in the center here. She could represent you or she could represent the other person and you could be uh, the other party. And of course, it doesn't matter who's who uh, with these cards. The idea is that they represent a relationship. Normally, when I see the clover and scythe together, I tend to think of a lucky break, like there is something that suddenly comes through as a chance event or an opportunity that maybe you didn't expect. So I feel that this could come through. You could get a sudden opportunity, something can turn around to your advantage, maybe you didn't plan for it, and it does turn out to be a good thing. The clover as your cover card, Pisces, really helps you with a sense of good luck, a sense of being blessed, it can sometimes encourage risk, but of course I wanna be cautious about suggesting this, but it is an idea that is associated with the clover. If you feel you're ready to take advantage of something or to make a change maybe because of the site, then it looks like luck is on your side. In the other diagonal, we have the moon and ring. And Pisces, this is a great combination for relationships for involvements, for offers, for invitations. The ring in the sense sort of invites you to become involved with something and the moon tends to be associated with this kind of offer, a proposal, a sense of appreciation. And so with the ring, it really works well to suggest that. But of course, the relationship element is also well represented in the card. So it is also really good for relationships. Now in the top row, we also have lots of good cards in the relationship context or lots of good ideas, I have to say. The clover and key are two very bright cards, really success and wish fulfillment um, in a relationship are very obviously suggested by these cards. The key can be a bit more specific, suggesting an opportunity, suggesting the idea of having access into something 
or getting the green light uh, towards this involvement, but in a relationship, in a personal relationship, it is also a very good card. So again, a very positive turn of events here. I really feel with the clover and key and the clover and scythe, there is like a turning around of a situation. This is especially helpful, Pisces, if you had been, um, you know, if you had been at a disadvantage, you can look forward to things turning around for the better. And with the ring, we see this in the context of a relationship or an involvement or a commitment. Now, the middle row should really be obvious, the heart, woman, and man. This is very good for a relationship. Uh, clearly, this is in focus for you this month. And I'm thinking in the context of the snake here, which by the way, is very tricky in relationships because it tends to be associated with a third party. Well, I'm not seeing so much this idea of deception and cheating and dishonesty. You know, I'm sort of a bit like, the, the cards are so bright that I'm not really seeing this kind of toxic energy that could come through this the snake instead i feel that it is telling you to play it smart and to be discreet and to be roundabout in your ways the bottom row is not so roundabout though we have the moon and the road and the scythe but what this is suggesting is that there is a pretty big change in your direction pisces the scythe with the road is clearly a change and the moon can bring into the picture your lifestyle like we said it can be this invitation that opens up an opportunity and we saw that in a few lines so this can be a time when you are able to take advantage of something to turn things around and move in a different direction and that can be pretty significant so in contrast with the snake i would say pisces you want to wait for the right time for this to happen and because this is your May monthly reading, it looks like it can't happen within the month, but it sounds like you're gonna to have to sort of lay low and um, wait for it to happen, you know, be discreet. Um, and then once it does, then you're able to, to move ahead and to take advantage of this. The Clover, Heart and Moon is an all around beautiful triplet, lovely cards for feeling good, for feeling lucky, for feeling, appreciation and being appreciated it is great for relationships the heart t crosses the woman and the man which is really lovely and uh, it's a triplet that really brings luck and beauty and happiness just across the board so it really looks like pisces you can get some wishes materialized this month and they do seem to revolve around a relationship we have the key woman and road in the middle column, which T crosses the bottom row. So this is clearly a suggestion to take advantage of this opportunity and to make that change and to go down this path. And with the key, we see that there's an opening to do that. So really this is tying quite a few of the other lines together. The opportunity, the green light, uh, you know, the change that comes through, you know, they're all coming together here. This would be the curious line because we have the ring man and scythe. So the scythe with the ring is actually the classical combination of a divorce, of a separation. And we do have the scythe with the road. We also have some other structures that I don't normally read in a monthly reading, but we do have cards like, uh, combinations like the road and ring, which also add to this idea of changes. And it looks like this person here, whether it's a man in your context or yourself or someone else, is making some radical changes and we see the scythe also tying into the bottom row so it's possible that changes that this person makes affects your changes um, it's like there is something that is restructured or falls through changes radically and this enables a new opening for you that you're able to take advantage of at this point now, there are different ways this can play out in a specific scenario. I'm thinking in terms of a third party relationship, like if we're looking at a love triangle, and I know this is kind of specific and maybe doesn't apply to all of you Pisceans out there, but by way of example, you know, we have the snake in the Astro Clock cards and the snake is often associated with a third party. And so if there is a fall through in one of the sides of the triangle, of the love triangle, 
then this can mean that you and this person can be together. So there is a restructuring in this way and there is this opportune change that you're able to take advantage of. I think in a personal relationship, this would be the most uh, relevant interpretation because the cards are pretty clear about that. Outside of a love relationship, the dynamics are supportive. It's really just in relationships that it's a bit tricky because the snake tends to represent this idea of a third party. But otherwise, there are simply changes that come through that you're able to take advantage of. It looks like this man in this line here is able to bring about these changes, or perhaps he does something that turns things around. Like we said, it could be you or really just about any other person, but the dynamic is the same. The idea is that this person breaks away from something and this change opens up an opportunity for you. Uh, again, the clover as your cover card, Pisces, really puts you in this advantage and the snake here really asks you to sort of be hands off because it's going to happen and it's going to happen at the right time and you'll find that you're able to take advantage of this opportunity and make quite a change. Now, the scythe and ring are not adjacent, although they're pretty close enough, so it's also possible that a connection that you have or a relationship that you have with this person or either one, you know, there is a change or is something sudden. So if not a break off in the more direct interpretation of the ring and scythe, it can be just a radical change or a sudden change or a sudden opportunity that comes through. And like we said, you're able to take advantage of this and move forward and take advantage of this opportunity. So it looks like it's happening, but you're going to need to be patient. And it is also happening to your advantage, Pisces. That is very clear in the cards. This is also good for relationships. It looks like, you know, there is a strong relationship here. And that's where at the outset, I felt that the scythe is not so much a divorce or a separation or a break off for you, but it seemed to be around you or something in, that is in your circle, but not directly within your relationships and I feel that this separation opens up an opportunity for you. This is my feeling from the cards um, and of course I'd love your feedback but the change in a, in a relationship, if it's not your relationship, this change really opens up an opportunity. It can also bring freedom you know from uh, these different combinations here but the reason I feel it's in your surroundings and not so much in your personal in your own relationships is because there are so many other combinations that are so good for relationships we've got the top row the second diagonal uh, we've got the obviously the middle row which is very strong and of course there are other ways we can you know combine the cards that i don't always read in a in a monthly reading because you know a bit like a mini tableau the portrait is also filled with a lot of amazing details so Pisces, all in all, it's looking like a really exciting month. There is a strong focus on relationships. There seems to be a pretty big change within these relationships. And these changes open up an opportunity for you. Your takeaway is really to be patient about this, to be roundabout and also to be discreet because it's happening. So let me know how you like these ideas. I'm looking forward to your thoughts and comments as always. Very best of luck with the month and until next time, thank you for watching and take good care of yourself. Hello Aquarius, welcome back to the channel. Thank you as always for tuning back in. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Leila, the Lenormand reader, and I am one of the few people who focuses almost exclusively on the Lenormand practice. So welcome to your May monthly reading, Aquarius. We have your cards from the Astro Clock. We've got the letter stork and the heart. Clearly, Aquarius, this points to some news that is happy, news that answers a wish. And it seems to kick things off into motion because we have the stork in the middle here. Uh, or it can be that you yourself are at a point where you can actually communicate now and move things forward. The stork is really active. It helps with change, with moving forward, with getting things going. So clearly seeing it in your cards and also in the middle of the triplet points to 
happy activity moving forward this month, Aquarius, especially since we have the heart next to it, because it suggests that you're happy and you're excited and looking forward to this. So this is some good news that comes through. The letter can also point to paperwork, Aquarius, so it tends to be associated with documents. Some people also take it as knowledge and information, um, which can come in a number of different formats for you. It depends really on your specifics. But in all cases, we're seeing forward movement and a sense of excitement in this regard. I can't really tell from these cards in what area this is figuring for you, Aquarius. Perhaps your nine card portrait will give us some info about this, uh, but also it can come down to your specific context. So do let me know uh, in the comments. Let's go ahead and draw your nine card portrait and see uh, what these cards is about and also what is in store for you in May. Okay, Aquarius, here is your nine card portrait and it is really exciting. We have the letter that figures in the cards again and this aligns well with your Astro Clock cards. We have some beautiful success cards here and wish fulfillment cards. We have both the sun and the star and they are two of the brightest cards of the deck. We also have the fish with the bear and I have to say this is a really good combination for wealth and prosperity and we also see it with the star and the rest of the cards are supportive. So this can be a really empowering month Aquarius on the money front, on the uh, practical front with work your business, you are looking at some happy events and some important activities that is in the pipeline for you. As your cover card, we see the garden and the garden tends to be a social card. So seeing it on your cover card, Aquarius suggests that you could be in for going places, socializing, networking. The garden is also associated with the marketplace. So in the context of the money and financial element here, you could be looking at business or your network or perhaps just your job, uh, which by the way, the garden can also represent. In the center, we have the cross and really Aquarius, it's interesting to see this card in here. It's a bit different from the other cards in the sense that it highlights some deeper aspects in your life. It can bring up some important choices, some important decisions, and also some deeper life lessons. It sounds like these events that are in store for you this month, Aquarius, have longer term implications or deeper, deeper implications for you in your life. And we have the bear at the end of this first diagonal. The bear is a card of strength and empowerment. And you could be in for some kind of step up or possibly Aquarius, you could be in for some responsibilities. And in this sense, the cross can be a little bit burdensome and the bear in alignment with this, it can feel a bit heavy. So the portrait is very, very positive. We can though read this first diagonal as suggesting that you have quite a lot on your plate right now and also that you need to step up to something in a certain environment or in, you know, on the job or with your business or in some other context of your life. And this can feel like a load or a bit of a responsibility, but clearly Aquarius, you do really well. And if anything, it's an opportunity to shine. In the second diagonal, we have the star, cross, and letter. So this is where we see a very tight alignment with your Astro Clock cards. The star, a bit like the heart in this context, suggests that there's the happy news, the good news that comes through. The cross really suggests uh, that sense of importance and that it's meant to be. Uh, so this is lovely. And so we see here that you get the feedback or you get um, the news or the announcement that really advantages you and that answers you in a way that you want. Like I also suggested Aquarius, you could be the one who makes an announcement. So you could be the one who, um, you know, sends out the letter or the communication and with the cross here is definitely time to do this. And also I suggested that the letter is paperwork and you know, we have the book and bear in this column here, and I feel this can point to something official uh, just because the bear has that sense of importance. And also the book can be a bit like more paper if you like. Uh, so with the letter and book, normally this would represent some very important news. And it certainly does in your context Aquarius and with the bear really adding to this, um, you know, to the significance of this communication. But in the context of 
the letter being paperwork and documents, you know, the book can uh, sort of thicken the stack, if you like. So I'm thinking things like um, budgets and maybe taxes or, you know, accounting and things like that. So something a bit thicker than just a letter. And with the bear here, it is an important, either an important opportunity or an important step for you, uh, or it could be an important achievement, obviously, with all of these cards. Um, so the letter can go beyond or be more than just this idea of a news or contact and suggest, you know, a bit more like documents and paperwork, maybe contracts, uh, you know, something a bit more official in different lines uh, or in your context, Aquarius, but still very empowering and very exciting. So in the top row, we have the garden ship and the letter. Again, the, the news element is supported positively with the ship. The uh, garden and ship tells me that you're going places. Uh, you could also be expanding a little bit, uh, you know, going beyond your current circle, your current responsibilities, really aligning with this idea of stepping up and the stork that brings about changes. And um, the letter with the ship can point to travel. In fact, you know, the cards without the letter can point to travel, suggesting that maybe you go somewhere. And in this sense, the letter can be, uh, you know, paperwork or communications that help you do this, maybe agreements, maybe, you know, visas and passports and things like that. All of it coming through positively for you. Moving on to the middle row, also a very bright combination, the sun, with the cross and book really revealing something positive. The cross and book can sometimes point to spirituality uh, just because of the, you know, the symbolic aspect of these cards or these symbols. And with the sun here, there can be a sense of understanding, a sense of enlightenment, um, you know, achieving some kind of awareness that is above the usual. The, um, the cross and book can also be a little bit like the letter in its different context with the cross here highlighting the importance of this and obviously with the sun suggesting this achievement and this wish fulfillment and the happiness that comes through from this news, from the paperwork and generally from this achievement. The, um, the cross and book can also highlight some important information, Aquarius and the idea of reading between the lines or getting into a deeper understanding here. And with the sun, there can be this idea of digging out something out into the open so that you shine a light on this information if you like. So it's a good idea to spend some time on the details, uh, you know, in the context of the documents, this book, uh, the news, uh, you know, focus on this and get into the details. The bottom row is uh, super. It is the starfish and bear, really good for finances and prosperity. You could land a client, you could land a deal, you could get a promotion, a bonus. Uh, from the money perspective, these cards can suggest any of these scenarios for you, Aquarius. And in general, they point to wish fulfillment and empowerment really across the board. But there is a strong sense here of financial independence, you know, with the bear suggesting the idea of standing on your feet and also suggesting a solid foundation. So very good cards for your hopes materializing in general and more specifically in the context of money and prosperity. Same thing with the garden, sun and star, another beautiful wish fulfillment combination. This is the line where we have the two very bright cards of the layout and with the garden, again, suggesting this idea of going out there, uh, networking, or possibly Aquarius, you could be in for popularity and success and recognition in this sense. So the garden with the sun and star, you know, they're both shiny cards. You know, they tend to be associated with popularity and with the garden being the public at large, they are very, um, these cards are very supportive of this idea. So shine through Aquarius, enjoy your success and your popularity. The ship cross and fish is again, very good for finances. This is the column that T crosses the bottom line. The cross in this context can mean that you're in for some important decisions. Again, this ties into the need for attention to detail and really digging out this information, shining a light on it. Um, there is also a sense of responsibility about where you're heading with your money, with other practical matters in your life, and also more generally, Aquarius, your overall sense of ambition. 
So you could feel this month that you're growing, that you're becoming more empowered, that you're succeeding, you know, that you're gaining reach and popularity. So it can feel like you have to step up to this next level. And like we said, the letter book, uh, along with the bear, some very important news, just in alignment with everything else really that the letter is in. And also this um, idea of some important information. So overall, Aquarius, this is quite a strong month where you feel like you grow, you can step up to responsibilities, you could gain popularity, um, really expanding your reach. And it's also a very good month for money. The communication element seems to be in focus, so really work on you know, contact, communication, networking, like we said. And when it comes to paperwork, you obviously want to be focused on detail, really paying attention to as much of it as you can. There can also be a knowledge element where this is more about uh, your understanding and your information and even on a different level, a sense of enlightenment and understanding. But a very empowering month, very good news that helps kick things forward. Definitely a good time to be with people, network, really to step up to the expectations because you do have an opportunity to shine uh, Aquarius. So really take advantage of that. So amazing cards. Let me know how you enjoyed them. I look forward to your comments as always. Very best of luck with the month Aquarius. And until next time, as always, thank you for watching and take good care of yourself. Hello Capricorn, welcome back to the channel. Thank you as always for tuning back in. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Leila, the Lenormand Reader, and I'm one of the few people who focuses almost exclusively on the Lenormand practice. So welcome to your monthly reading Capricorn. We have here your Astro Clock cards. These are some pretty neutral cards in my feeling uh, Capricorn. They can be a little bit challenging because of the fox and coffin, but because of the house in the middle, I really feel this has more to do with going away or taking a break or leaving a place. Now the fox is a tricky card generally. It points to tricky people. So the type that is a little bit deceptive, it's not as toxic as the snake, but it can be that kind of person, uh, you know, a little bit uh, self-interested, if not outright selfish. And we have the house next to the fox. So this can point to a certain environment in your life, Capricorn. It could even be close to home, like within your home, uh, where there can be someone who is hiding something, uh, but it can also be in another context like a workplace or a certain group that you're part of. And with the coffin on the other side of the house, it clearly suggests like an absence, okay? So not going to this place or t going away uh, from that place, moving away from it, you know, taking like some distance uh, from it. It can also suggest Capricorn that this is a waiting time. And with the coffin here, it can feel like there isn't much happening. It can be like things are on a standstill. And I also feel Capricorn that the possibility of boredom or feeling that things are uneventful uh, is at play. And the reason I say that is because the fox can be a little bit half-hearted where it pretends to sort of enjoy things and not really enjoy them, or it pretends to be something and it, it isn't really that thing. Uh, you know, so it is clever in these ways, but because of the coffin, I feel that it can take a bit of a disappointment kind of energy and so this is where I'm suggesting that you could also feel like not much is happening things are a little bit boring you know you're not really interested in this environment and you sort of you know you sort of just want to maybe make a change or get away from it the cards can also suggest that you're a bit tired or feeling a little bit under the weather and in this sense it's a good time to take time out Capricorn to relax and maybe you know to keep it a bit quiet this month so let's see what else we get about these cards from your portrait cards here. And also if there's anything else going on in addition to these, um, to these cards in this triplet. So let's go ahead and deal out your nine card portrait. Okay, Capricorn, here is your nine card portrait. And I have to say the cards are really strong. They are pointing to, they are pointing to changes, separations, leaving very much in alignment with what we're seeing in your astro clock cards here. I did mention the snake and the snake popped up. Uh, so they have a sort of a similar energy where they sort of feel a little bit deceptive, but what I'm 
feeling Capricorn for you this month is that you're really not into something and maybe you're not really able to express this fully so you're sort of maintaining a bit of a facade uh, but you're sort of bored in this environment or you're done with it and you want to leave and move and uh, move away and so we see this very very clearly in your portrait cards we have the scythe and ring which is the combination of a divorce we have the snake and ring which similar similarly suggests this idea of a fallout from a relationship it also is the combination for deception in terms of a love triangle although i'm not really seeing that element uh, so much in these cards and we have the road in uh, the cards which with the ring can point to a parting so it's pretty clear that there are some changes uh, this month for you capricorn you could be leaving uh, from a certain situation i feel you're done with it you're tired of it and you want to you just want to change and you want to move on we also have the ship card by the way which is like the road and by the way the house is in both uh, com uh, cards both sets of cards in the trip in the astro clock triplet it's in the middle and in the portrait it's in the uh, bottom left here so it can point to again this environment that you could be leaving moving away from the ring in the center of the cards actually aligns with the house because the house can bring up relationships typically closer relationships and with the ring i tend to read it as family relationships so maybe you're moving away from your current home maybe there is a fallout within your home there can be um you know some relationship issues at that front capricorn uh, or it could just be um like getting away from a certain environment and a broader um, kind of interpretation as your first card we have the lily and the lily is about life path and your life in general your life direction it's also the card of career and on this note capricorn the fox is a card of jobs and so these different areas can come up for you but in a general sense uh, this is about like your life and your life situation you know what your lifestyle uh, as well and um, you know, with the ring and ship, it looks like you want to re-engage. You want to move in a direction. You want more excitement. Um, it is also a good combination for relationships, although this would have to be another relationship because the cards and other combinations with the ring clearly point to a separation, as do your astro clock cards. So it sounds Capricorn like you're bored, you're done with something and you want to re-engage in a different direction. Like you want to travel also or go places, even if it's not physical. So this can be the pull, you know, the, your inspiration this month uh, in contrast with the current situation that you're at right now. We also have the house ring and road. So again, we're seeing this sense of adventure through the road and ship. What these two cards have in common, apart from the movement and travel, is that they're sort of open-ended. So they don't really focus on a destination. Instead, they focus on the journey. So again, with the, with the house and ring, it's like you want to explore um, a different kind of involvement in view of the other cards as well. There, there is like a continuation of things. So it's not like this is interesting. It's not like there is a tragic fallout with someone. I'm not picking up that it's so much a personal relationship. You know, there is support and a continuation of things, but it sounds like you just need a bit more adventure, Capricorn. The lily, moon, and road is very much about that. Actually, the lily and moon is this combination of lifestyle and also with the road. So you may want to make some changes to your life, your routine, the things you do, you know, also your sense of well-being I'm picking up. The lily and coffin can be about well-being. So it can be a time when, you know, you really need to pick yourself up. You're bored or you're, you know, you're, you're done with something and you want to make changes that inspire you. In the context of work, this line is really good. Uh, the, this can be an offer and this can move you forward and this can align with the diagonals as well. The snake ring and letter on the other hand is a bit trickier. The letter with the ring can point to a contract actually or some kind of agreement. But with the snake Capricorn, I would be very careful. There can be some tricky things here. So I would say don't necessarily commit to something but just think about it and certainly get into uh, the details of it you know examining what it's about this would be the case with work for example so maybe you get an offer 
and you actually turn it down. That too is a possible scenario. The house, scythe and ship is definitely a break off, a separation. So with the scythe, um, the, these combinations are going to come through. We also have the scythe in the central column with the ring. And this is the key combination of a divorce. And obviously it doesn't have to be divorcing a relationship, but it is you know, getting out of a commitment or some kind of routine or something that you'd been in for a while. And uh, the moon softens this energy a little bit. Again, the, the change here can come in the wake of an offer to change or an invitation to do something different. So you could be changing plans, Capricorn, maybe changing what you thought you were going to be doing this month and go in a different direction. You could change your mind about it and feel like, well, after all, you're not really into this and you prefer to do something else. And I have to say that in this sense, Capricorn, the cards are pretty supportive. Uh, so we see this very clearly, like I said, in the bottom row. The scythe and house is parting, moving, um, breaking away from this house, from this environment, as is the coffin and house. And with the ship on the other side of the scythe, well, it's very obvious that you, you change directions and you go someplace else. The lily snake and house, I feel, is very similar to the fox house and coffin. Um, there is this slow energy that we get through the coffin and the lily. And the fox and snake have quite a bit in common. They tend to be deceptive, but they're also discreet and diplomatic. And I feel they, they are highlighting a sense of uh, disappointment or just not being in the mood of this, uh, of this situation, Capricorn, but you're, it sounds like you're being nice about it. The house and, and house in both uh, lines obviously points to this environment. So again, Capricorn, we're seeing this idea that you want to move away, you want to change. Maybe you haven't been able to be so vocal about it, uh, but with the rest of the cards, certainly with the scythe, you know, you could actually decide to make a change and say you're gonna, you're gonna leave. Just like we saw in the middle column here. And the road, letter, and ship is uh, a more exciting line. It's also nice to see it on the right hand side. It really confirms the idea that you're going to end up making this change. You know, we see the road and ship, these movement cards, sort of on the right hand side of the portrait. The letter, in the sense, can point to paperwork or the news, or perhaps you decide on taking up this offer and this sets you off in this direction. It could also be any communication that is needed in order to make this change and leave. I, I feel, Capricorn, that you've been keeping your boredom or your lack of excitement with this a little bit under your hat. You've sort of, um, you know, you've been nice about it or diplomatic about it. But at this point, I think you, you want to make a change and move on. So at some point, you're going to have to be honest about this Capricorn and you, you're going to have to vocalize it. And I think this is also what could be coming through the letter in the road and ship um, and in view of the snake earlier in the row in here. Um, so you're in for some changes, uh, Capricorn, this week. It looks like you're going to want out of a certain situation, a certain context, and you're going to decide to just um, go in a different direction. It sounds like you've been gentle and calm and nice about it, but I think at some point you're going to have to declare, if you like, that you want this change and that you want to, um, you want to do something different right now, and, and then you'll end up doing it. When it comes to relationships, personal relationships, uh, the cards are pretty heavy, I have to say, Capricorn. They can very much point to an idea of a separation here, a parting, even maybe for a more dramatic scenario, something like a divorce. Um, there is this idea, again, of wanting some freedom, wanting change, wanting to go in a different direction, and I think you will end up doing this. So if you're in a bad situation, Capricorn, or you feel that this is really not healthy and it's not, it's not, it's not doing anything anymore for you and you're ready for a change, then this could be the right month for it. When it comes to jobs and work, the cards are more exciting. Um, you could be leaving a job for another one. If you're in business for yourself, you could be making changes in your business for more exciting um, projects and different directions moving forward. In this sense, I would say focus on the details of the contract, uh, Capricorn. Focus on the paperwork and uh, make sure you understand what you're getting into. Um, so 
quite quite a quite a message here capricorn pretty strong pretty clear that there is an ending and a change i think it's going to come down to how you go about it um timing it and also planning it well um and bringing yourself to the point where you declare the change and you you know you embrace a bit of a different direction here so let me know how you like these cards let me know how they played out for you i certainly look forward to your feedback very best of luck with the month and until next time thank you for watching as always and take very good care of yourself hello sagittarius welcome back to the channel thank you as always for tuning back in if you're new here welcome i'm leila the normal reader and i am one of the few people who focuses almost exclusively on the Lenormand practice. Sagittarius, welcome to your May monthly reading. We have here your three exciting cards from your astro clock. As you can see, we have the ship in the middle, which can point to travel, but it's also a great card for going after your goals, pursuing your projects. And we have the key and fish on either side of the ship. And these are success cards, ambition cards. The fish specifically is focused on money and finances. And with the ship, you could be looking at making sales or getting good returns on investments. Your projects are starting to bear fruit. So it feels like a successful time for you, Sagittarius. It's a time for growth and expansion, getting things done as well and going after your goals. And for some of you, perhaps you're traveling somewhere in the sense it's looking good. It can bring answers, deliver some solutions or some things that you're after even if it costs you a little bit it sounds like it might be a good investment of your money and time so let's go ahead and set these cards aside Sagittarius and see what your portrait cards are going to add to this or suggest uh, in addition to this beautiful triplet here okay Sagittarius these are some nice cards to see there's a lot of alignment with the astro clock cards uh, there are travel cards, the mountain and the road, as well as the stork. And we have the ending uh, card here, the coffin in the right hand, left hand side column. And so it looks like you'll be moving on from something and pursuing something more exciting. We see this very clearly with the stork and the flowers is a very beautiful card. It is a success card. It is a card of optimism and abundance. And this too works well uh, with the ship and the fish. So I really feel that this is a time, Sagittarius, when you are reaping rewards, when you are seeing the fruit of your efforts. And it is very much an exciting time for making changes, for completing something and moving in an exciting direction. We have the clouds at the top of your spread, and this is the card that covers you. So it tends to be a bit of a challenging card. It tends to bring out stress and challenges. It tends to be a psychological card. So maybe there's a lot on your mind, Sagittarius, but the rest of the cards are bright. In the first diagonal with the flowers and stork, this is a very positive turnaround. You're able to make changes, move forward and get unstuck. And also the clouds and flowers can actually be a good combination for creativity. Now the coffin flowers and cross is a sense of renewal. And this is something that I'm picking up clearly from your portrait, Sagittarius. I think you're done with something. You want to complete it. I feel also because of the clouds, you are tired of it, bored of it, and you want to wrap it up. And the flowers with the cross here gives you a new energy, uh, a sense of renewal, and you renew your enthusiasm towards the coming projects. The clouds, road and cross, this is the combination of crossroads. And so this is where we see the clouds playing out in a clear way, suggesting that you're thinking about what choices you should make about the next steps. You could be at a juncture, you need to decide in which direction you go. And so this could be weighing a little bit on you, but clearly Sagittarius, this is the right month to make these changes and to make these decisions. The ring, flowers, and moon is beautiful in the sense of relationships, creativity, your routine. Really, across the board, it is a very beautiful combination. I suspect the idea of an offer or the ability to, um, or the opportunity that comes your way that gives you the ability to engage in these exciting projects. But in terms of relationships, it can also be a really good combination. 
In this sense, the rest of the tableau can take on a bit of a, a different suggestion here. Let's keep it aside at the end when we wrap up everything. Uh, we look at the cards in terms of a relationship as well. In the bottom row, very clear Sagittarius, the ending, and we see that there's this stork at the end of the line really picking up what seems to have been a stale situation, a situation that wasn't going anywhere perhaps. Maybe you felt like you were blocked and that things weren't growing anymore and at this point you're ready to make a change. The triplet can also suggest going away and uh, leaving or taking a break. So they're very good travel cards. Even if you're not going across the border or to a different country, it might be really good Sagittarius to take a break and sort of go away and do your own thing for a bit here. I certainly think this can give you inspiration and uh, it seems to be part of your exciting uh, uh, direction here that's unfolding. Now the uh, clouds, ring and coffin, very clear combination here. This is a completion ending, letting go. Um, with the clouds being a bit challenging, it's, uh, it seems to be something that's weighing on you. Maybe you're bored of it, you're tired of it, you want to get it off uh, your back and just move on. In terms of relationships, like we said, this can be the end of a relationship as well, Sagittarius. Let's put that on hold a bit. Now the road flowers and mountain is a combination of return. It suggests that things are back into motion. Again, you could be going back somewhere. The mountain can represent a place abroad. And we have quite a few travel elements here. Maybe you're visiting someone in a different place. Maybe you're visiting family or going home or you know doing, um, doing these sorts of things. And in all cases, the triplet is really happy. Really, the flowers bring back this... Um, uh, this idea of renewal and your enthusiasm is back and so you feel like you're back on track. So it is a call for celebration and happiness. The cross, moon and stork is an interesting combination. It is generally positive. The moon and stork seems to suggest an offer or an opportunity. You could also get some positive feedback, some kind of appreciation. Um, and with the cross here, it can be something that's pretty weighty for you. I feel this is tying into the decision that you're making. And I think you could be contemplating some lifestyle changes as well, Sagittarius. I feel this comes through with the moon and with the ring, you know, this idea of a routine, with the road, your, your ship, you know, here, it's about your direction, the things that you're gonna be doing, how you're gonna be doing them. So you could be looking at all of this and uh, wanting to infuse some positive energy into all of this. So I think this is gonna work out nicely, whether it's an offer or positive changes and re-engaging uh, in your sense of well-being and your projects in a, in a healthy and exciting way. So clearly, Sagittarius, there are positive changes happening for you this month. Things that were stale are gonna pick up you're going to be able to make changes that infuse your life with enthusiasm again. You'll be able to close things off and move on in a new direction. Um, your projects are exciting. Creativity and success and results are all in the cards. And the travel element is clearly at play here where you could go places, um, you know, take a break uh, from your circumstance and get away. Or you could be visiting people in another place, going back to a certain place. All of these are possibilities on the table. And like I said, Sagittarius, we can also look at the cards in terms of a relationship. I don't think this is the strongest theme, but we do have the ring and, you know, ending and changes here. Uh, so it might apply for some of you. Now, when it comes to the relationship context, the cards are a little bit more challenging because we have the clouds and coffin next to the ring. So in a context where it's about changes, it's about ending an involvement and that tends to be relieving, even though it's a bit difficult. But in relationships, it can be a bit weightier where the idea of an ending uh, can happen. But I have to say, Sagittarius, that in the context here, specifically because of the flowers, it is possible that issues or differences or a time apart is actually closed off and you're back together or you hear back from the person. So the cards around the ring, the clouds and coffin here, they suggest an ending and a time apart, but the flowers can suggest that there is an opportunity to bring things back. Uh, there can be an opportunity to meet again, to patch things up. 
And I suggest that because the rest of the cards are actually really positive. If we had seen more challenging cards here and also with the support of your Astro Clock cards, if they were challenging, then we might have suggested that the opportunity to come back together doesn't really gel, it doesn't stick, like you might have tried or you know had a conversation or tried to bring things back together, but you find that it doesn't really work out. But in the context of your cards here, Sagittarius, the cards are bright. So it looks like there is an opportunity to fix things and move forward. So these are my suggestions for you when it comes to relationships. Again, I don't feel this is the strongest theme. I feel instead it's more about your sense of expression, your projects, um, your creativity, the, the exciting uh, things that you're doing. And this comes in light of a situation that doesn't seem to really go anywhere anymore at this point. So it's a good time to make these changes, Sagittarius. Declutter, close things off, and clear off your table, your plate, so that you can re-engage with more enthusiasm. Clearly, there's opportunity to do this this month, and you want to take advantage of it. So let me know how you like these ideas. Leave me your thoughts and comments. As always, I look forward to them. Very best of luck with the month, as always. And until next time, thank you for watching, and take very good care of yourself. Hello Scorpio, welcome back to the channel. Thank you as always for tuning back in. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Leila, the Lenormand Reader, and I am one of the few people who focuses almost exclusively on the amazing Lenormand deck. So Scorpio, here we are in May. We have your Astro Clock cards for the month of May. They're looking pretty solid. I mean, each of these cards is slow and experienced. It points to someone who has some kind of seniority, some kind of um, authority even, and influence on things. And there is a strong sense of stability from the cards. So it looks like you are on the right track, you are building on the right foundations, and you have a strong sense of self. The um, bear is a card of empowerment and promotion, and the anchor is very well rooted, it is very strong, and it gives you a lot of support. And the lily is really focused on your life path, your career, and your direction in general. And like I said, all three cards point to this idea of strength and that sense of stability and foundation. So the cards are broad in the sense, but clearly they are focused on your sense of confidence, your sense of foundation, and they are a really good sign that you are on the right track. You could also get a promotion, you could be in for some growth, you could land something important. It is really a, a triplet that is supportive of your life in general and your sense of strength, like I said. So let's put these cards aside and let's draw your nine card portrait and see what else the month brings and what else we know about these three uh, cards from your Astro Clock. Okay, Scorpio, here is your portrait. It is quite an interesting portrait. There is a relationship element that comes through that really adds to uh, the um, Astro Clock cards. And we do have a bit faster cards, I would say, than what we have in the Astro Clock cards. We have the rider in the middle, we have the stork and the road, and they are a bit faster than the slower moving actions of the bear. And certainly the anchor is not all that much moving. We also have an element of ending that comes through this line here. I suspect it's a little bit challenging because of the snake next to the man. And this line here clearly suggests an ending. At the same time, we have the child as the cover card of the portrait, which is the main card that represents you. Clearly, Scorpio, you're in for a new beginning, and in tandem with your Astro Clock cards, it sounds like you have achieved something pretty significant. And I think you have a strong sense of independence, and at this point, you're ready to turn away, make a change. Um, it looks like you are relying on yourself um, moving forward, and this seems to be in light of an ending with a relationship, in a relationship, and also within a circumstance. So let's draw these interesting lines in your portrait, Scorpio. The child, rider, and coffin. So this is a clear combination of a beginning and an ending. Obviously, when we have both the child and coffin uh, almost back to back here, there is a very clear indication that something is ending and that there's a new beginning. The rider is a pretty proactive card. 
it has to do with um, taking initiative and moving forward. It is active. It takes things in stride. I have to say it's really good with that. And so it suggests that you might want to take initiative to make these changes, to bring this to conclusion, to move forward into a new beginning. It's also uh, an encouraging card. It can be a messenger as well. And with the letter, as we'll see uh, in some combinations, it can be the news that you get that enables you to move forward, or perhaps you make the announcement that you're moving on. In the second diagonal, it is very clear, Scorpio, the road, rider and snake, you are turning away, moving on, letting go, I would say as well, from uh, the circumstance and uh, likely also from this relationship. Again, this is another message that this is a month for this and it's a good time for this. The child, cross and snake in the top row, this can be a difficult decision you make. The, uh, the cross can bring this uh, sense of challenge, possibly sacrifice along with these important decisions. And um, they're kind of weighty, uh, like the, um, it is kind of weighty like the cards in the astro clock. The snake clearly points to a turning away, and obviously uh, with the child here, a new beginning is meant to be. I also think, Scorpio, that you could be carrying a bit of regret, or maybe you're a bit stuck. Um, maybe these cards are also holding you down a little bit, but the snake is clear in telling you to move on. Obviously, the other lines were very clear as well. So it's a significant new beginning, Scorpio, this month. In the middle row, we have clear messenger cards. So the letter writer and man clearly bring news or someone into the picture who brings this, um, maybe it's a um, green light or the go ahead or the input that you need to uh, make this change. This man can be the messenger or he could also be the person who leaves. And with the letter and writer, it's clear that there is some communication or some interaction here uh, that has to do with the change and with the two of you parting or you moving away uh, from this connection. The bottom row also contributing to these um, strong message, clear messages. Um, and so the, the portrait is quite strong together, all together like this. The road stork and coffin is clearly a change of direction, uh, bringing something to conclusion, uh, an ending. I mean, it's really the cards are so clear in what they're telling us. Again, the child letter and road, this new beginning that is kicked off or um, enabled by this news and the road opens up this path ahead for you. So again, a new direction, a new chapter. The cross rider and stork is this choice you need to make. And also it is a message that it is now the time to make these changes, Scorpio. You have to pick up and move forward. Uh, the cross can burden you a little bit with this decision. But it is also a card of duty and obligation. So I feel like um, at this time you have to, you have to move on at this point. Very clear in the last line here with the snake, uh, man and coffin suggesting an ending in a relationship. And the snake really is a bit of a, a challenging card. It, it is also very different in energy from the rest of your portrait, Scorpio. And it can bring down a little bit the energy of the spread because without it, it can be pretty exciting, these endings that are ahead. But with the snake, it's a little bit dampened in the sense, especially next to a relationship card. Um, and so this can be a bit of a disappointment with someone. So taking your cards together, the astro clock and um, the portrait, it is clear, Scorpio, that a change needs to happen this month. You are moving in a new chapter, in a new beginning. You have to let go of someone or something and you know what you've got the strength and the confidence to do this um, it's clear though that it's time to do this scorpio so this can be quite a big deal and in terms of relationships there can be an ending i, I mean i can't interpret the cards in a different way when they are speaking you know so clearly uh, but it does look like it is time for this i'm not saying it's necessarily a personal relationship a Scorpio. In fact, I'm not really seeing romance cards. Instead, we're seeing more like your life path, your career, you know, your direction. And so if there are 
a person or some people involved in the change that you're about to under undertake, then these are uh, probably the people you move on from to pursue uh, new ventures. So quite uh, a turning point, I have to say for you this month, Scorpio. I certainly look forward to your feedback, your thoughts. Um, as always, I look forward to reading your comments. Very best of luck with this new beginning. And until next time, as always, thank you for watching and take good care of yourself. Hello Libra, welcome back to the channel. Thank you as always for tuning back in. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Leila, the Lenormand Reader, and I am one of the few people who focuses almost exclusively on the Lenormand practice. Libra, welcome to your monthly May reading. We have here your Astro Clock cards, and they are looking pretty exciting. We have the rider and the road in the cards, and these are active cards. So it looks like you're pursuing some goals, going after some things. You could also be going places, um, maybe errands to run and things like that. And in some cases, you could be traveling, even if not too far, or maybe going to, like taking weekends off and things like that to visit some friends. We have the dog in the cards and it is normally the cards of friends and it is normally the card of friends. It is also good with colleagues and really anyone in your peer group. So taking these three cards together, Libra, it looks like you could be visiting people, going places with people. You could be running some errands with the help of, you know, the kinds of people who help you in your day-to-day -day life. It is looking like an active month based on these cards. And so you do want to pursue your goals and, you know, do the things that will get you to achieve things. So let's put these cards aside and draw your nine card portrait here to see what else we get for you for the month. Okay, Libra, here is a really amazing portrait. We have some very strong and beautiful cards. We have the star right in the middle of your portrait, and we have the clover and the key, as well as the tree and the fish as your cover card. So, so clearly this is a very powerful moment for wish fulfillment. It looks like you're really gonna get things done and achieve a lot of things, even big things. We do have the clouds in the cards. The clouds can be a little bit challenging, but really in view of all of these powerfully positive cards, this is looking like possibly some thoughts that you're having or some decisions that you need to make, some confusion or complications in certain areas, but it's clear from all of these beautiful cards nearby that you are gonna be able to resolve uh, any issue really that comes up. Now the fish as your cover card Libra really focuses on money and work and prosperity, enterprise and things like that. So it does bring out the more practical area of your life. So this looks like a month to focus on your finances, your work, you know, you're getting things done. We also have the ring in the cards, which is a relationship card. So these can also be at play uh, in your life this month. Now let's take the first diagonal. We have the fish, star, and clouds. When I see the star and clouds together, you could be after certain ambitions. With the fish here, I think it's about your financial goals, um, maybe work goals, business goals, and the clouds can bring a bit of doubt, but I think it's gonna be important um, that you focus on the long term, as we see in the second diagonal, and what you're facing in the near term or right now, uh, Libra, are things you can overcome. I also think the clouds could be asking you to think about what are your ambitions really. Um, you could be reprioritizing, you could be reconnecting with some bigger goals. It is definitely a good month to do this. I also think it's really important that you don't doubt yourself. The second diagonal is a beautiful line. We have the tower with the star and clover. This really suggests that you're in for a long patch of good luck, Libra. Things are unfolding beautifully over the longer term. You can achieve your goals and your longer term goals. And because of the tower, it's really important that you have that, that long range view so that you can align everything towards that. But definitely with the start and clover, we're looking at some happy times, wish fulfillment, and a strong sense of ambition. The fish garden and clover Libra is really good with work, money, and business. Um, the clover is really nice to see with the garden and fish. You could be in for more money. You could be expanding your presence in the market. You could get opportunities in any number of ways. The garden would suggest that you go out there and network and be with people. And certainly with your Astro Clock cards, Libra, this is a good idea.
Now the ring, star, and key suggest that you have some really supportive relationships here. I think this is also well supported by the Astro Clock cards. Tap into the connections that are supportive uh, to you, Libra, and you'll find that they can help you find answers, achieve your goals, and move forward. The tower tree and clouds could be a bit of a trickier line because of the clouds here. I think that you could be dealing with a bit of uncertainty in terms of what's going to happen a bit later on. You could be perhaps impatient about some things, Libra, but with the tower and tree, it's important that you focus on the longer term and also that you uh, take some time for things to unfold in the direction that you want. Maybe you want things to materialize a bit faster than they are right now, but I think it's best to allow them to unfold and to take a bit more time. And also with the clouds, like I said with the star, with a card like the tree, which is really good with going within and pondering things, again, it's a good idea to think about where you're heading with all this. So this is a really good opportunity to redirect, to reassess, and also to realign with your goals because you're in for some major achievement here. So you wanna make sure that the energy you're investing in yourself and your projects is uh, aligned with really what you genuinely care about. I have to say also Libra that both the tower and tree are good with solitude. So despite the um, people element in the other cards and in your astro clock cards, it can also help to take a bit of time out, um, you know, just for perspective and also to, to look at things um, from a different angle. And with the rider and road in your astro clock cards, it also might be a good idea to get away or go somewhere interesting. The fish ring and tower is really good for relationships. Uh, these are long-term investments, long-term connections that pay off. Uh, again, this idea of a longer term commitment is suggested in the cards and with the fish it looks like it brings you prosperity. It's also very good for the job. You could be going after a job or a project or some involvement here. So if you're about to land a deal or get an offer, you can find that it works out over the long term and it certainly helps you with your long term goals and your long term security. The second column, also a very beautiful line here. The garden star entry can really suggest, Libra, that you have more popularity, you have more outreach, you are growing within a certain environment. It looks really good as well with achieving your goals. Certainly be there, you know, be out there and have faith in your process as well. And the clover key and clouds is very clearly a combination of finding solutions. Certainly with the key and clouds here, it can be about brainstorming or thinking about things. It is about problem solving. And with the clover, it is clear that you are able to land on a really positive solution, especially in view of the beautiful star right in the middle of your portrait. So Libra, these are some very beautiful cards for the month of May. We are looking at achievement, wish fulfillment, abundance, prosperity, support from people, um, finding solutions. Really there's quite a lot of forward movement across different areas of your life. So you want to take advantage of this and make things happen. And if there are a few issues that you are working through and trust that you are going to be able to resolve them and also tap into your resources, yourself, your intelligence to find solutions and you could surprise yourself. So a very beautiful month across the board, I would say, uh, Libra, focused across different areas, um, bringing success and healing and wish fulfillment. Let me know how you like these ideas. Leave me your thoughts and comments. As always, I look forward to them. And until next time, thank you so much for watching and take good care of yourself. Hello Virgo, welcome back to the channel. Thank you as always for tuning back in. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Leila, the Renomar Reader, and I'm one of the few people who focuses almost exclusively on the amazing Lenormand deck. Virgo, here we are with your monthly May reading. So we have your cards from the Astro Clock for the month of May. And Virgo, these are exciting cards. They bring change and movement and moves are actually possible and so is travel. We actually have a really key combination within this triplet. We have the house and the stork. And I have to say, Virgo, this is the main combination for house moves. And on top of this, we have the mountain and the mountain with the stork can point to travel, usually to a place abroad or farther from where you are right now. Now, I'm not saying that every single Virgo out there is going to experience a house move this month, but the idea of making changes, 
changing things around within your environment and picking up the energy this month is very much highlighted. And you might also want to sort of change your headspace. I mean, often we do these changes in our surroundings because we want to change on some level inside. So these cards are very active and they bring a fresh energy and probably also a sense of adventure as you pursue different places and just getting out. Uh, so this is lovely in terms of, you know, the activity that we can look forward to this month. Let's see what the portrait cards have to say about this. Let's go ahead and deal out your nine cards and see what else we get in terms of these three cards and other indications. Wow, if you go look at these cards, there is a lot of activity in these cards. We have the scythe as your cover card, we have the whip in the line, and we also have the tree right in the middle. So right from the get-go, we see that in the first diagonal, you are gonna uproot things and you're gonna change things around. The scythe with the tree is very much about uprooting something and the whip is quite an aggressive card that changes things around. And so it's really clear that you're gonna shake things out this month. In the second diagonal, we have the ship at the end of the line. And even though we have the tree, I feel that in addition to the other cards and the order of the cards in this middle column, there is a strong suggestion of picking up and leaving and going somewhere. So it's very clear that you want a change to the status quo. You've spent time on what you're doing. You've been in the same circumstance for some time or in the same headspace, if you like. And now you really feel like changing things around and shaking out your environment, shaking out yourself and just bringing some change into your atmosphere. So this can be really exciting. We have the moon key and whip in the last column here. And the whip is a challenging card normally, but with the key, you could be finding some problem. The whip is a challenging card. But with the key, you are in for solutions to whatever issues it brings up. And the thing about the moon is that it's gentle, it is soft, it brings solutions and a positive unfolding. And so if you center yourself and if you calm yourself, you're going to find solutions to whatever comes your way. The tree actually really helps you with this. The tree is a card of being centered and rooted. But in the context of these cards, I feel that you need to make a change and you are really ready to embrace something different right now. In the top row, we have a confirmation of this. We have the scythe, star, and moon. These are beautiful cards for wish fulfillment, Virgo. The star is an all around healing and wish fulfillment card. And with the scythe, I feel this really is about breakthroughs and release and a sense of relief that you're able to embrace at this time. The ring tree and key is a beautiful combination for achieving some very important goals. It sounds like you have been committed to achieving this and this could be the reason why you're now able to break through and break free. It's like you have achieved something and you are celebrating and you're ready to wrap it up and move on. In the bottom row, we have the cross ship and whip. And this could be a pretty challenging combination, Virgo, because of the whip. This can mean that you're in for a bumpy ride, but I have to say, because of the cross at the beginning of the line, you know you are meant to make a change at this point. You know you are meant to explore something different. And even though there's gonna be some challenges ahead, you are ready for them. You are ready for any challenge. You just want to break free at this point and do something different. So these are some really powerful cards that are coming to your advantage, Virgo. You want to take advantage of this energy and this momentum that you have to make changes, to do something different, to tackle challenges head on, and to really embrace your sense of change and growth. The cards can apply in a number of different areas. You could be looking at making changes in your relationships, maybe breaking free of some restrictions. You could be making changes on the home front. Some of you could be moving and traveling, and you could also be just making changes across your life in general. It is a good time to make these changes very go. It's a good time to get out, maybe to travel if you can, to explore different things and release limitations. So let me know how you like these ideas, Virgo. Leave me your thoughts and comments. As always, I look forward to them. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching and take very good care of yourself. Hi, Leo. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you, as always, for tuning back in. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Leila, the Lenormand Reader, and I am one of the few people who focuses almost exclusively on the Lenormand practice. 
Welcome to your monthly reading for the month of May, Leo. We have here your Astro Clock cards. And I have to say, these are some really interesting cards. It's a very unique triplet. It can take on a few different meanings. The snake is a tricky card and it starts off the triplet. It is one of those cards that suggests deception and also funny intentions. It can be a tricky card, especially when it comes to people, but it also has advantages. With the flowers, I typically read the snake as suggesting someone who is false to your face, someone who is a charmer, who pretends to be interested or nice, and they don't really mean it. And with the mountain here, they could be trying to get their way with you, but I think that the mountain really helps you block this kind of person. So the flowers, I think, endows you with a lot of optimism. I think you're able to easily disarm such a person. In another sense, Leo, we could be looking at the snake advantaging you so that you can get what you want in a way that is kind and diplomatic. I also think that with the mountain, you have a nice way of getting around an obstacle, like going around it. The cards are very much about an indirect approach as opposed to a head-on, more aggressive kind of approach. And in another sense, another way we can read these cards, Leo, is in terms of travel. And that's because of the mountain and with the flowers, it can suggest returning to uh, some place, revisiting. In this sense, the snake can be something that you keep under your hat. So maybe you have plans that you don't want to share right now, uh, but also it could be in relation to a person. Perhaps there were some disappointments or some issues and there is an opportunity to patch things up, possibly by getting together. So a really interesting set of cards here. Let's put them aside and draw your portrait cards for the month and see what else we find out about these cards and other things going on for you this month. Okay, Leo, here is your nine card portrait. It does bring into focus a relationship because of the ring in the middle. And notice that we also have the mountain in the cards and it is the first card of your portrait. What's interesting is this combination and it immediately stands out to me because the bear and mountain often represents someone who is based abroad. And with the lily, you could be looking at a life abroad, a career abroad, or maybe setting up something for yourself abroad. It's also possible that you, you your parents are in a different location and you are revisiting and this could be in focus for you this month. Now before we get into the different lines, I do want to focus a little bit on the, the bigger kind of indications, mainly through the mountain and ring. This can be a relationship that you have in a different location. Uh, and also, Leo, I often suggest that the mountain can refer to anything online. So it is the card I take to refer to the internet and the idea of being remote, uh, you know, and distant. Now with the ring, it can be a connection that you have on there either in a different location, like we said, or online. The anchor is very supportive here. So it's definitely a combination that helps you maintain this connection. I also think that the idea of a foothold in a different location is highlighted through the anchor and through the bear. So these two cards bring the same idea here. So you could be looking at establishing certain connections in a different location, maybe expanding or reconnecting with someone. The letter ring and lily is actually a really good card for a contract. You could be looking at a job or some kind of project or some other connections that help you establish something that you're after through uh, a contract. The line is generally neutral, but if you're after something like this, then the cards can be pretty supportive. And like we read in the top row, you could be looking at a life or a career in a different place or possibly online and you are looking at um, establishing this connection. The contract and the paperwork can come through. We have the mouse ring and sun in the second uh, line, and the mouse sort of mirrors the snake a little bit. It is not a very challenging card. It brings a few issues here and there, and with the beautiful sun in the line, I think it easily overcomes any challenges that it might bring up. When it comes to relationships, the ring and mouse tends to be associated with issues of trust. Either it could be something that is wobbly or not really certain, uh, but the sun really helps overcome this. So if you've been having doubts about a relationship or your involvement with something, uh, then this beautiful sun here helps you overcome it. 
the letter across and anchor a beautiful line for a positive conclusion uh, very clear here that the paperwork comes through that messages come through um, the cross in here can suggest that there are some important decisions that you need to make uh, this could involve the involvement that we're looking at the prospect of a contract or the different location and you could also be weighing uh, some other issues in relation to that. I think the key with this line, Leo, is that you need to make a decision. Uh, so the anchor is pretty firm with this. You need to make a conclusion and um, move forward with uh, what you make of this contract, this location, and the involvements that it entails uh, for you. I also think it's important with such a line, Leo, that you pay attention to the details, that you focus on the paperwork, the fine print, um, you know, and if you need someone's support, like an expert support, I would suggest that you um, involve them uh, so that you are clear about everything that this contract and this um, venture here entails for you. Now, the mountain, mouse, and letter can point to a bigger obstacle because the mountain makes the mouse a little bit bigger. And with the letter here, what I feel could have been going on is that there could have been some delays and um, there could have been some issues with the paperwork, with the communication. I think this aligns well with what we see in the Astro Clock cards. Um, but again, I'm not seeing any aggressive approach. I think it's important to be patient and to be nice and you know reach out if you need to but we're not seeing an aggressive uh, attitude at all. And again, the um, mouse uh, in the row is the point that T crosses the, sorry, the mouse in this column is the point that T crosses the row. So we see with the sun that this issue is resolved. So be patient, hang in there. The bear ring and cross is an important uh, relationship. It sounds like some decisions are in the hands of someone, probably someone who is in a position of authority or something like that. This would be a manager uh, in the case of a job, um, but it is someone supportive. And this very beautiful line here, really nice to see it in the right hand side column. We have the lily sun and anchor, and it does point to a very beautiful and positive conclusion for you. So it sounds like things are moving, things are happening, things are gonna come together, Leo. It sounds like there's a bit of an indirect approach to this you know, managing some people, managing some communication, some paperwork, um, getting to into the details, making sure you understand all of it. All the while, I think keeping um, kind and patient approach to all of this, and we find that it is a very positive conclusion. I feel the cards are really geared towards your work life, your lifestyle in general, but they could also point to a relationship as in a personal relationship. And in this sense, like we said, we have some challenging cards here, the snake and the mouse, but really because of this beautiful line and the rest of the cards, I think you can look forward to resolving differences. And it sounds like the relationship is on a strong footing, uh, you know, and the issues that you went through are actually much smaller than the strengths of the relationship. So there's a quiet energy in your cards, Leo, but they're still quite effective at bringing positive conclusions, uh, strength in relationships, uh, strength in foundations. And it can be that for some of you, you're looking for a change or connecting with someone or something abroad and looking at creating a foothold in a different location. In all cases, in all of these scenarios, the cards are bright. Just move gently through some issues, work out any details that need to be ironed out, and you'll be on the other side of this. Let me know how you like these ideas, Leo. I look forward to your feedback as always. Thank you so much for tuning in and until next time, take very good care of yourself. Hello Cancer, welcome back to the channel and thank you as always for tuning back in. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Leila, the Lenormand Reader and I am one of the few people who focuses almost exclusively on the Lenormand practice. Welcome to your May monthly reading, Cancer. We have here your May cards from your Astro Clock. And we do have the somewhat challenging mouse in the triplet, but we also have a clear focus on communication. We have both the bird and the letter. So it looks like contact, communication, uh, getting in touch with people, outreach, and so forth are gonna be in focus for you. 
It's just that with a challenging card like the mouse, and again, it is not a very challenging card, there can be some miscommunication, some misunderstanding, and things will need to be ironed out. So it's going to be important to communicate things so that any issues can be clarified. So let's put these cards aside and draw your portrait card to see what this is about and if we have more insights into this triplet and also into other areas of your life. Okay, Cancer, here is your nine card portrait. We do see a challenging element. It is the web in alignment with your Astro Clock cards. And we also see a strong focus on people. So we have the woman and the dog and the fox can sometimes represent a person as well as the bear actually, but it is your cover card. And so there seems to be a focus on uh, contact and relationships and people uh, for this month for you, Cancer. Now, the good news is that I think that the challenges are overcome pretty easily. The whip is a challenging card, but it's not dramatized in the portrait. And we have a lot of good cards here, and the flowers is really the key card that helps us overcome it in the bottom row. So I think that this month is going to be about resolving an issue with someone or some people cancer. And so you want to focus on the bottom line. And I think it's a good idea to collaborate, uh, but also to really understand what's going on so that there can be genuine clarity moving forward. There can also be some other changes that are happening in your life cancer. I suggest we weave these cards and build your portrait from the ground up. So looking at this first diagonal, which has the two important cards in a, in a portrait. So looking at this first diagonal, Cancer, we have the bear, cross, and road. So clearly the cross and road is a combination of crossroads. And with the bear, you could be um, taking on the decision of having to make a choice. It is a bit burdensome. I think there's quite a bit of responsibility that we're seeing here through the bear and cross. And um, you need to decide in which direction something is heading or you are heading. I also think, Cancer, that it is important that you step into the next steps. It's important that you move forward. Um, you want to take on uh, your path, as it were, and you want to take initiative to make changes and to move forward. Now, the whip, cross, and child adds to that because we have the child, which is a card of beginnings. And with the first diagonal, which points to travel and path and decisions in that sense, you could be moving into a new chapter, into a new direction. You're making decisions about something that is about to change in your life. The whip adds challenges here. It can point to differences or challenges that you've been facing either in your circumstances or with someone. But I think with the child in this line, it's important to make a decision to turn the page. So you want to decide this month, Cancer, whether this issue is going to keep taking up space in your life or if there's going to be a point where you are going to get to the bottom of this and move on. And I think this is a really good energy to find uh, in Cards Cancer because it helps you bring something to a level of clarity so that you understand what it's about and you can sort of put, a, put it aside and move on. And this really aligns with what we saw in your Astro Clock cards where I suggested that there are some differences and some issues that come up and talking about them, communicating about them is going to be important so that they can be ironed out. In the portrait here, we're seeing similar ideas. The whip is a little bit more aggressive and the bear is kind of strong. So the portrait is adding a sense of strength and initiative um, to have you move forward towards the bottom line so you can turn the page and move in a new direction. We have the bear woman and child in the top row. This can obviously represent a person, but it can be a new relationship. Uh, like we saw in the second diagonal and we are going to see in here as well, there is an element of something new. So this can be an important new relationship that comes into the picture for you. But I also suggest that it can represent someone with children or it can represent someone in your family because sometimes when we see the woman and child or the man and child, it represents someone with children and can represent this idea of 
um, a family. The bear is also often associated with the mother classically. So these three cards, each of them are bringing um, this idea of parenting, children, family. So there can be this area of your life that is in focus for you. And perhaps the issues or the communication situation figures within this context. Otherwise, it can suggest a new relationship. And I think with the bear, there is a sense of support and importance to this relationship. Now, in the second row, we also see the relationship element. We have the dog. The fox is tricky. It tends to represent people who are self-interested and a little bit deceptive. So it can be the case that this person, um, you know, brings this issue to the table, like the issue we see with the mouse and the whip. So there can be the differences that start to come up. And with the cross in the middle, there is this idea of making a decision and assessing how you feel about this relationship. It is also a good card for evaluating matters, which I think is the main thing that is in focus for you this month, because it aligns with the Astro Clock cards, where we said we want to get to the bottom of the issue to iron it out. In the bottom row, we have the whip flowers and road, and here we see a positive message. I certainly see this as a positive message. I appreciate that the whip can be a little bit heavy handed, but it's really nice to see the flowers on the other side of it and then the roads. So the way the line is unfolding is that you're able to resolve an issue and move on. The flowers is actually the card of forgiveness and actually with the cross, it can be about apologies. Uh, so there is a good um, outcome to all of this cancer. You can look forward to resolving differences, um, you know, apologizing yourself or the other person or both of you uh, and moving on from this. So I think the outcomes are quite positive. And again, it's not my feeling that the whip is so challenging. Um, you know, the other cards are balanced uh, and the flowers is bright and positive. And in the Astro Clock cards, it's kind of light. Now, the bear, fox, and whip is a bit of a challenging combination here. Uh, the fox and whip suggests a confrontation. And certainly with a strong card like the bear, it can mean that you need to deal with something in a more direct way. What's really clear about this line is the fact that the bear is your cover card. And this suggests that you might be the one who needs to take this initiative cancer and shake things up and confront the person or bring up the issues, you know, and start talking about it. The Astro Clock cards are very clear about this. It's time to be vocal about the issues so that we can dig them out and resolve them. The woman cause and flowers, like we said, it can suggest an apology. You could receive an apology from this woman, from this person, or perhaps you yourself are extending one. Uh, but in all cases, regardless of how exactly it is expressed, whether it is through an apology or not, the cross and flowers really bring a sense of healing. So we see this idea of being able to overcome the issue and resolve them. The child, dog, and road is a lovely combination as well for a new relationship. Like we said, you know, it ties into this new relationship at the top. Um, I am suspecting, Cancer, that it's not a new relationship altogether. Putting these lines together in the portrait with the, with the Astro Clock cards, I feel this is more about a new phase, a new chapter with this person. And with the dog and road, there is like this forward movement, a bit like what we see in the bottom row. There is a new page, there is an overcoming, the apologies are made, you know, the healing happens and you're able to move on from the issues that came up. So it's a really good month for collaborating with others or another person, Cancer, to resolve differences or issues bring them to a completion and turn the page into a new chapter with this person. I think you will find that this can be very relieving. I also think, Cancer, that you'll find that there are important lessons that are learned 
and that you're genuinely able to move on. So it's important for you to spend the time on this. And I don't think it is um, dramatic. It is not, I don't feel it is very dramatic, but you let me know. I mean, these um, can come down to your specific situation. So some really interesting cards here, Cancer, really focus on resolving issues. It's time to bring it out, even if it takes a bit of shaking the cage, as it were. Focus on the bottom line and also maintain a positive attitude because you are going to overcome it and you'll be able to turn the page uh, with this person and move on. And as with many readings, Cancer, the dynamics here can apply to a personal relationship or to someone at work or to some other uh, context in your life. Speaking of work, Cancer, I can suggest that you could be in for a new job. The fox is associated with jobs. In the context of jobs, Cancer, I think you could be looking at potentially a new job. The cards that would support this idea. The Astro Clock cards can point to negotiating the deal, the terms, the contract. There can be some issues that you need to fix. And this is what we're seeing here and in a few different lines. But this side of the portrait is actually really supportive for a new job and you could find yourself moving in a new direction. In this sense, a promotion is possible. I think you might need to sort of wrestle for uh, the advantages that you're after. Uh, in this context, but I do think that you can work out a good deal uh, and move forward. I would say with the cross, it's important to compromise a little bit. So some pretty powerful cards, Cancer, like I said, you want to come to the negotiating table and resolve differences or issues with a person or uh, as you negotiate a deal and you'll find that you will resolve uh, the differences with some give and take and move on into a new chapter. So pretty powerful. So let me know how you like these ideas, Cancer. Leave me your thoughts and comments. As always, I look forward to them. Thank you so much for tuning in. And until next time, take good care of yourself. Hello, Gemini. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you, as always, for tuning back in. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Leila, the Lenormand Reader, and I'm one of the few people who focuses almost exclusively on the amazing Lenormand practice. Gemini, welcome to your May monthly reading. We have here your May cards from your Astro Clock. And as you can see, it focuses on a person. We have the woman in the middle of the cards and we have the moon and the child on either side of the woman. These are very feminine cards, Gemini. There is uh, a lot of this feminine archetypal indication through each of the moon, the woman and the child. And so this can bring up women energy in your life and women in your life. And the woman in general, as is the man, uh, typically represents who is someone who is close to you, someone who has quite a lot of significance in your life. So it can be uh, like a sibling, a parent, a colleague, a close friend. It can be your spouse. It can be your partner. It can be really any person, but they tend to be close cards when we see uh, the woman and the man. And in the case of your triplet here, there is a strong focus on women in your life and also a sense of creativity as well as a new beginning, not only through the child, but also through the child and the moon, which points to a new phase obviously by the association of the phases of the moon. So very beautiful metaphors here, what we're seeing for you, Gemini, as well as uh, people in your life. And the moon is a gentle card and the child is a, also a joyous card. So just from these cards, it looks like there's a positive connection here with this woman or with this person. And she seems to be in focus for you this month. And also Gemini, you could be her. So sometimes the woman represents you, the Redi. And so in this sense, you're in for a new phase, a new beginning, and also it's a good time for expressing creativity, probably in new ways. Sometimes the moon is associated with offers and some authors associated with work. And so with the child, you could be looking at an invitation or a new opportunity. There is an opening uh, that we're seeing here and it also has that beautiful energetic element where it goes a bit deeper than just an event in your life. So lovely cards from your Astro Clock. Let's see what your portrait cards look like. What else they add to this triplet uh, and to your month. So let's go ahead and deal out your nine cards. 
Okay, Gemini, look at these cards. There is a really strong focus on relationships. We have the man coming up as your first card. Clearly, this is pointing to a relationship uh, and really whether it's the woman or the man who's you or the other person, it doesn't matter. The idea is that there is a clear relationship in focus for you. We also have the dog right in the middle of the cards and this represents a friend and we have the ring which clearly points to a relationship. So it's very obvious, Gemini, that this is going to be the focus for you this month. One or more people, friends or connections or family, um, depending on the specific area of your life where you feel these cards are going to play out for you. But in all scenarios, in all cases and in all contexts, uh, the focus on the connection and the relationship is very key. We have some challenging cards. We have the coffin and the snake. And the coffin is a card of endings and the snake points to turning away. And we do have the child as a new beginning here. So it's clear that there are changes, there are endings and possibly partings. Now, how deep and how radical this ending is, Gemini, I think it's going to depend on your circumstances. And another um, theme or thing, let's say, that's coming up in your portrait is the bird and the letter. And these are cards for news and communication. So again, really focusing on the people element for you this month. So looking at the first diagonal, we have the man, dog, and snake. And this is a tricky combination, Gemini. The snake is not so great in relationships. I wonder if the dog can be a third party in context with the snake here in view of the relationship element. There can be some things going on behind the scenes. There can be a third party in the relationship. If you are suspicious of this, I have to say, Gemini, that the cards could suggest that. Otherwise, there can be differences that are coming up. There can be uh, things that are possibly souring, if I can put it this way, and there is an inclination to move away. And in the second diagonal, we have a clear message of this. We have the coffin, dog, and bird, and the coffin is a card of endings. With the bird, I feel it can be about uh, silence, actually, and a lack of communication. Uh, with the dog. And what's interesting is that when we look at these corner cards here, the coffin and bird points to a lack of communication and the snake itself is also a card of silence. So it sounds like there isn't much communication and what I'm seeing mainly coming through this column here, which is on the right hand side of the portrait and therefore often associated with outcomes or later parts of the story, I feel Gemini that communication doesn't really pick up and we see this in the bottom row and this could be also the reason for this new beginning which by the way is actually a really positive beginning so i'm wondering if maybe you welcome the fact that a that a relationship is dwindling away it's sort of fizzling out communication is sort of falling off we're not seeing aggressive cards for an aggressive ending or a sharp separation or like that but it sounds like there is a dwindling away or something is winding down in the top row we have the man cross and bird and this sounds like a communication or a conversation or discussion of sorts is going to be needed um, especially with the cross here which is going to highlight some important things I also feel, Gemini, that there's a bit of a, an energy of nervousness here uh, in, the, in the cards or with this person. Maybe this person is not wanting to have a conversation. Maybe you feel the same way. In the bottom row, we have, in the middle row, we have the ring, dog, and letter. Normally, I would read the ring and dog as pointing to a love relationship coming out of a friendship, but I, I can't really read it in this way in view of the other cards, Gemini. It can mean that there is a relationship in the making and that you are letting go of one relationship and moving into another. This would certainly align well with your Astro Clock cards, but I feel that the middle row can also add to the, the need to have a conversation, to get in touch, to uh, talk things out. And we see this with the letter as well. In the bottom row, we have a very clear message, Gemini. This is clearly the message of an ending. We have the coffin and the snake, and these two cards point to a parting and a separation and moving away. And on top of this, we have the bear in the middle. That is a card of strength 
and it makes things a bit bigger so it can suggest that this is quite a significant ending with the man ring and coffin we have the clear message of a relationship ending here and we see that the ring t crosses uh, with the um, middle row so there can be news of a parting gemini i think this is really clear in the cards and i i don't think there's a way to not see this um, in the cross uh, dog and bear middle column here there can be an important relationship that is at stake or that is in focus and in the third column we see a clear message about the communication the conversation the interaction we have both the bird and the letter along with the snake clearly gemini this points to a parting and a separation and really the cards all together are very clear about what is going on here um, you are moving on into a new direction the other person is moving on into a new direction and you're having a conversation about this and you agree to move on and let go now this dynamic would apply in any context so for example maybe you're in for a new job so you resign uh, or you are moving away from a group of people or a certain involvement in another area of your life so you decide you know you you're going to move on and you have the conversation about that when it comes to personal relationships uh, the same dynamic applies but it tends to be a bit heavier and a bit more dramatic because of the snake and in the context of personal relationships gemini it's pretty clear that there is a possibility of a third party here so it can mean that you decide to leave your relationship for another or perhaps the other person decides to leave your relationship together for another person i cannot dismiss this possibility because we have quite a few cards that can point to this in this context especially with the snake and the dog we have the man and woman representing the primary relationship and the ring supporting that and then the other relationship with the dog and the snake so really there's quite um, a strong combination of cards and a strong structure of cards that supports this idea so i can't really change this from the cards gemini it is a bit uh, challenging in this sense but i also think that you may be the one who wants to move on because of your astro clock cards and remember these are your astro clock cards and we drew them for the month of may and it turns out that you're in for a new phase and a new beginning so it looks like things are winding down in a relationship gemini whatever this relationship may be for you uh, specifically um, it looks like it's good to have a conversation about this you know clarify intentions and then move on the energy is kind of slow and it sort of winds down i'm not seeing some aggressive energy but there is a bit of tension that i think remains uh, but still you know have that conversation and move on and turn the page into this new beginning i think the month is mainly focused on this so we're not really seeing what the new beginning is about we'll wait uh, for next month and see uh, what is in store then so let me know how you like these cards gemini let me know how well they resonate i'd be really interested to know what kind of relationship dynamics are at play for you this month so leave me a comment or two i always look forward to reading them very best of luck with may and as always thank you for watching and until next time take very good care of yourself hello taurus welcome back to the channel thank you as always for tuning back in if you're new here welcome i'm leila the lunar reader and i am one of the few people who focuses almost exclusively on the lunar practice so here we are in may taurus and i have your may cards from your astro clock and these are looking really good the tree brings this energy of peacefulness and a sense of being grounded the rider is really good with goals and objectives and the anchor is very much about achievement so clearly taurus you are on the right track keep doing what you're doing you are on track to achieving your goals the key here mainly coming through the tree and the momentum of the rider is to maintain consistency and the anchor really adds a sense of discipline so these are really good cards to get things done to be consistent to check things off your list one at a time one after the other really going after your goals and achieving them one by one until you've checked off everything you intended to so really good cards uh, for you this month let's go ahead and draw your portrait cards and see what else we can get from 
um, the cards in addition to these triplets. I think that there could be some news that arrives if you wait on it a while longer. And let's see what the portrait says. Okay, Taurus, here is your portrait for the month of May. And I have to say there are quite a few challenging cards. What comes to mind when I see this portrait in tandem with your strong and very positive Astro Clock cards is that really the whip energy is setting the tone for this. It seems that you need to get things done and you need to have a more aggressive attitude towards it. It has been possibly bumpy or you have had a lot to deal with. There could have been a lot of things that were a little bit all over the place and with your Astro Clock cards you need to streamline all of this in order to bring it to a firm conclusion. We're also seeing the woman in the cards so this is going to represent a relationship and there can be some issues in the relationship I have to say that Taurus. With your Astro Clock cards in this sense there might be a need to create a healthier boundary. The anchor is really good with this and the tree is about being solid and stable. Uh, so there can be some challenges that come up in a relationship and maybe you need to move forward and deal with them. In this sense, Doris, the triplet here in your Astro Clock cards is really good at setting healthy boundaries. The anchor is really good with this and the tree is also strong in this regard. So there can be issues that come up with a person and also you seem to be working through a number of other issues. So it seems like there's a lot on your plate this month, Taurus, but I think the way forward really comes from your Astro Clock cards. You wanna take it step by step and be consistent and do things one after the other until you reach a positive conclusion and we see that you will. We also have the child in your portrait and this points to a new beginning. And I'm really picking up something important through the bottom line here. This can point to a new job. It can point to a new chapter in another area of your life. And so in the top cards here, you could be wrestling your way out of a current situation in order to land in this new position. So let's go ahead and weave these cards, Taurus. In the first diagonal here, we have the whip, cross, and child. And this is quite a challenging line because it seems like you need to make a really tough decision about this new beginning, but it does look like you will make it and you will embrace this new beginning. I think also the whip encourages you to have courage and also to, uh, to move forward and not to hesitate. Don't hold yourself back anymore. So again, this idea of forward movement, taking charge and being energetic. The fox cross and clouds is also challenging, mainly because of the clouds and cross, but also the fox can add some trickiness in here. The fox can be a card of jobs, but it can also be a card of deception. And with the clouds, I feel that you could be wanting to figure things out. And with the cross, maybe you are confused about certain priorities, some decisions and sacrifices that you need to make. In the job context, I feel, Taurus, that you are tired of the current situation that you're in. There can be some problems that you've been facing. It could have been a stressful environment. Maybe there is a situation with a person, a disagreement with a colleague um, that is causing you to want to make this change and to just let this go and move on into a new beginning. Now, the top row is also pretty challenging, Taurus. We have the whip, road, and clouds. And again, we're seeing this aggressive energy that comes to your advantage because the whip is on the first card of the portrait. So really, you need to grab the bull by the horns, Taurus, and you need to move forward in your path. You need to forge ahead and confront uh, the issues and the problems that are in your way. And I also think this is an important line that tells you to get the obstacles out of your way. And this is where the whip comes to your advantage. It helps you whip out these distractions, these challenges, maybe people who are unhelpful. You really need to take charge at this point. The woman cross and mouse brings challenges with a person. The mouse is not a very dramatic card. With the cross, it can be a little bit heavier. I think here, Taurus, you are making a decision about someone. It's also probably someone you've put up with for a while and you're getting tired of this person. 
And like we said, the fox, lily and child is a very good combination for a new job, a new chapter, a new career possibly, and a whole new uh, direction that you're moving into. So we see in the top row, top rows, couple of rows here that there are challenges and that you're sort of wrestling your way out of um, the situation and into the change. The transition is also challenging, uh, but then at the bottom, like you land in this new position and it's definitely this that you're after. I can also add Taurus that once you land in this positive situation, we see that there is a positive conclusion and you, like you feel like you're in a stable situation again. The whip woman and fox is very much a confrontation with someone who could have been dishonest or deceptive or hiding something. Um, you need to grab the bull by the horns, Taurus, and you need to understand what's going on. You also need to take a stand, make a point, and then move on. And we see that you move on. In the second column, we have the road cross and lily. This can be an important decision with regards to your career, Taurus. And we see that the lily T crosses the bottom row, where we have a clear message of a new job, a new career, or otherwise, more generally, a new chapter in your life. So you could be at a tough crossroad, Taurus, but I think your sense of consistency, your sense of discipline, and your centeredness and inner strength are very much going to guide you and move you through this. In the last column, we have the clouds, mouse, and child. This can mean that this new beginning is a little bit complicated. Um, there are some factors that are unclear. But to be honest with you, Taurus, I'm not seeing that the challenging cards are, are telling us that you shouldn't go into this new beginning. I'm not seeing this at all. I'm seeing that you should move forward despite the challenges. And I have to say they're not, they're kind of, they're kind of big challenges. I mean, the cards are quite... Uh, heavy-handed and they're concentrated together in these ways um, but you need to forge ahead and move past this and fight your way through and then you'll land in this new chapter and this new situation whether it's in the job or elsewhere that seems to be a more positive foundation moving forward so you're chipping away at things this month Taurus but you also need to apply some more or less aggressive energy to move forward. You need to make some important decisions. You need to make changes. You need to confront people. You need to iron out uncertainties. And all the while you're turning the page into something that looks to be pretty exciting. You need to set healthy boundaries with unhelpful people. You need to set yourself on the right course. And all the while, you need to make sure that you trust yourself and you have confidence in yourself, Taurus, to achieve this new beginning and to move forward with confidence and land um, in this desired spot. So a powerful moment for you this month, Taurus. This is quite a big deal. There's a lot that you're after. Let me know how it plays out. I'm certainly looking forward to your thoughts and your feedback. So leave me a comment or two. And as always, very best of luck with it. And until next time, take very good care of yourself. Hello, Aries. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you, as always, for tuning back in. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Leila, the Renoma Reader, and I am one of the few people who focuses almost exclusively on the amazing Lenorma practice. Welcome to your May monthly reading, Aries. We have your May cards from your Astro Clock, and I have to say they are pretty challenging. We have the whip in the middle here, and we have it with the dog. So this probably means an argument with someone, and with the bear earlier, you could be the one who initiates this, or perhaps you need to stand strong in the face of this. But what I think is the main suggestion here, Aries, is that a confrontation is at hand and you might need to step up to it to set some things straight. So this can happen in any context of your life, whether it's on the job or in a personal relationship, but the idea is pretty much the same. So let's uh, draw your nine card portrait and see what else we get about these cards and uh, other things going on for you in the month of May. Okay, Aries, here is your nine card portrait. We have the mouse in the cards. It is not a very dramatic card. Definitely the whip is the most challenging card. 
and we have the fox as well so this can be a bit tricky in terms of a trap or something disappointing and we have the woman so the woman and the dog highlight a relationship so there can be someone specific and focused for you this month and this is where we saw the confrontation element at play here in your portrait cards we have quite a lot of travel elements we have the ship as your cover card the mountain in the middle the anchor on the other side of the um, mountain and the ship that can suggest this idea of landing uh, somewhere and we also have the child that is a card of new beginnings so you could be moving into something new whether that is a physical trip or it involves a physical trip or not and um, it could come in the wake of this challenge here. So let's weave the lines together and see how we put these interesting cards together for you. We have the ship, mountain, and cross in the first diagonal. This is a pretty clear combination for travel, probably also overseas Aries, and with the cross, it can mean that this is an important trip and one that can bring some deep insights for you. Now, now of course, not every Aries out there is gonna have some travels uh, figuring in May but the cards are certainly good with adventure and the cross and mountain can also suggest a very important chapter that is opening up for you interestingly enough this is also true of the child and mountain when we see these cards together there could be an important change an important thing unfolding for you that has bigger implications that you can currently see with the anchor you could be looking at a foothold abroad or you could be looking at creating some kind of foundation in a new place this can be in a physical sense aries but even if not we are looking at an important new chapter for you and some exciting ventures ahead and probably ones that you don't really see uh, at this stage how important they can be for the longer term in the top row we have the ship mouse and child now the mouse is not very dramatic it just causes a few problems here and there i'm not seeing that you should not move into this new beginning just because of the mouse it really is just suggesting some bumps some little things that go wrong here and there just prepare as much as you can for this trip or this change and embrace this new beginning in the tower mountain and woman this can be a relationship that you've had for a really long time or someone you've known for a while uh, possibly in connection with this place and you could be reconnecting with this person but again i suggest that this can be the issue that comes up um, in your astro clock cards and in the bottom row we have a pretty even combination I would say we have the anchor with the fox along with the cross I really feel that these cards are pointing to your duties and your obligations and the things that you need to be doing Aries so focus on getting things done don't take shortcuts get your disciplines in place you know take care of your routine your tasks do what you need to do is definitely what we're seeing in this line in another sense, Aries, the fox is good with work. And in this sense, you could be breaking away from a job in uh, the Astro Clock cards. In this case, you know, the bear is a manager, the dog is, a, is an employee. And with the whip here, we could be looking at some kind of separation. And because of this bottom line and the context of the travel and the changes and this new beginning, well, you could be in for a new job. I have to say, Aries, that I'm seeing this in a few signs. There's quite a few signs that have this new beginning here. So it can be aligned with the, the bigger energies right now. But again, do what you need to do and don't worry about it because it is on track. And I also think that you are clear about your priorities. So that's a really good thing. With the ship tower and anchor, this is very good for a solid foundation. It could be a foundation you've had in a different place, in this place that we're talking about, in a past chapter, in a different uh, time of your life, or it can be something that you're setting up for the long term. It's important to move forward, Aries. I think in a bigger sense, we are seeing some important cards at play. So we said that there's this important chapter that is opening up for you. We have the cross and the tower. These are deeper cards. I think your journey in a bigger kind of picture is in focus Aries, I would ask, what are you doing for the long term? What are you building for the long term? What foundations do you have in place that you can build on? 
So the longer term view and your sense of foundation is very much in focus because it affects this bigger direction and the choices that are at play right now and this new beginning that you're heading into. The mouse, mountain, and fox can point to bumps and issues and obstacles that you're facing. Yes, we saw that in your Astro Clock cards. There is something that you need to break through. The whip is quite strong and aggressive, so it's going to help you break through the mountain, which seems to be like a rigid thing that is in your way. And the fox is a clever card as well. So you've got the smarts and you know what you're doing and you also know what you want. I think that is quite key in your cards. Uh, but you have to work through these obstacles and you have to overcome them. I also suspect that the fox can be tied to difficult people and the mouse as well. So we have the mouse and fox at the diagonal of the woman. So she could be the issue here along with the astro clock cards where we have the whip and dog. So it looks like there are some people in your way and uh, you need to confront them, get them out of the way. And uh, we see this here in the middle row, in the middle column. Uh, but again, I think you're smart and you know what you want. And I think with the whip being so energetic and swift, you're not gonna waste much time on negotiating. You know, it's time to clear the path and move ahead. The child, woman, and a cross is focusing on this relationship because of the woman in the middle. The child points to a new beginning and the cross suggests that this is meant to be, but also in a more like, um, well, you have to, you know, at this point. So she could be someone you meet or she could be part of this situation that you're leaving and that you have to make a decision about your relationship with this person in order to turn the page and move into this new beginning. So it looks like a quite, um, there's a bit, it's quite a handful for you Aries this month. You could be moving, traveling, going places. You are definitely making changes. You are dealing with one or more people. You are confronting certain issues. You need to make some choices. You know, things are in the making. It's, it sounds like there's a lot of, um, a lot of things from different directions are coming to you this month. There is a past place. There are the future ambitions. There is this new chapter. There are, this, these people, this person, some obstacles to overcome as you move into this new beginning or as you set up another foundation. So it can feel possibly a little bit overwhelming Aries this month as you sort of get a, a good sense of where all of this is, um, how all of this is falling into place, what directions you're moving into, how you're gonna deal with certain people. And the cards I feel are affecting your life in a more general sense, but they could also be more focused in a specific area of life. I think when it comes to work and career and jobs and, and your, um, you know, your productive kind of routine in life, um, you could be in for a new beginning. You might need to wrestle your way out from the current situation, but it looks like you're pretty set for a new start in a different place. Travel is very much highlighted as well. It could be to reconnect with someone or to maybe set up some roots or some foundation in a different place. It's also part of this expansion phase that you're in as you turn into this new beginning. And the expansion is not very quick. It, it seems to be more something that you're starting now that's going to unfold over time. And it really has to do with the more serious things of your life. I have to say, Aries, this is about your foundations, you know, where you stand. Um, you, some roots you might have dealing with certain people. So you need to make this transition. And this is where I feel that really the cards are affecting the bigger picture of your life and not so much the smaller things. In relationships though, there can be some challenges here, mainly through the Astro Clock cards, but also supported by what we see in the portrait. I mean, the portrait is not really helping overcome the challenge of the whip. In fact, it encourage, encourages you to be direct and to confront the situation. You could be turning the page on the issue and moving into a new chapter with the person. And truth be told, I'm not seeing divorce cards and you know strong parting cards, uh, but there is a bit of coldness, a bit of an issue here. And I'm not saying it falls through completely, but it does seem to change a little bit in character and you're able to turn the page. 
So Aries, lots going on, I have to say, this month. I certainly look forward to your feedback. I'm wondering if one or more of these scenarios apply to you or if you feel that the cards are telling you something else. I would love to hear your thoughts and comments. Very best of luck with the month as always. And until next time, thank you for watching and take very good care of yourself.